Everybody's had a taste of Jurassic Park, right? It's a solid flick with an array of sequels to its name. Some of them hit the mark, others are, well, let's leave it at that. Jurassic Park, it's a cinematic masterpiece that explores the timeless battle between mankind and nature. The moral of the story? If you try to control nature, chances are you'll fail spectacularly. I mean, let's be real, bringing back dinosaurs is probably not the best idea. But hey, curiosity often gets the best of us, doesn't it? Now, in Jurassic Park, they claim to extract dinosaur DNA from ancient mosquitoes. Pretty neat, right? But hold on to your bingo cards, folks, because it turns out DNA isn't as resilient as we thought. In fact, its half-life is a mere 521 years. That means after about 6.8 million years, all the bonds in the nucleotides would be destroyed, rendering the DNA unreadable. So sorry to burst your bubble, but those dino dreams might just remain dreams. But wait, don't lose hope just yet. Back in the 2000s, Dr. Mary Schweitzer stumbled upon something intriguing. While examining a T-Rex leg bone found in Montana, she discovered what seemed to be soft tissue, complete with tiny blood vessels and proteins. Cue the jaw drops and gasps of awe. Now, there was some debate about whether it was actually tissue from the T-Rex or just some biofilm trickery, but recent studies seem to lean towards the former. While it is true that human red blood cells don't contain DNA, the story takes an exciting turn when we consider other creatures. In fact, red blood cells from fish, amphibians, reptiles, and birds all contain DNA within their nuclei. Isn't that fascinating? Fast forward to 2021, and the Chinese Academy of Sciences claimed they found preserved nuclei and chromatin fragments in a 128 million year old dinosaur femur. Mind blowing, right? Well, not so fast. Many scientists remain skeptical, suggesting that these findings might simply be microbes mistaken for dinosaur genetic material. But hey, regardless of the outcome, it's not even how we plan to bring dinosaurs back. Intrigued yet? Hold on to your hats. Enter the renowned paleontologist Jack Horner, a bit of a controversial figure in the field. He's the brain behind the audacious plan to resurrect dinosaurs. Remember Dr. Schweitzer? She was one of his students. Talk about a small world. Jack has a knack for stirring up debates, like claiming that T-Rex was just a lowly scavenger, purely to ruffle some feathers among his colleagues. Oh, Jack, you sly rascal. Now Jack's master plan involves using existing birds as the building blocks for our very own Chickenosaurus. Yes, my friends, birds are dinosaurs. Don't believe me? Well, some folks in the comments section might disagree, but we'll leave them to their own devices. Anyway, the project has gathered a team of geneticists and developmental biologists, and they're tinkering away in their lab. Their secret weapon? Atavistic genes. These little marvels can cause the reappearance of traits lost during evolution. So picture this, a chickenosaurus with arms instead of wings, teeth, a different shaped head, and a longer tail. Ah, the tail seems to be quite the challenge though. But fear not, for the ball is rolling, my friends. Loving the video or learning something new? Smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content you won't want to miss. Now you might be wondering who's funding this crazy endeavor. Brace yourselves, because it's none other than George Lucas himself dipping into that Star Wars treasure chest. Who knew our beloved Wookiee enthusiast had a soft spot for dinosaurs? So, with Jack Horner at the helm and George Lucas waving his magic checkbook, the stage is set for a real-life Jurassic Park. But when will this magnificent creature be ready to roam the Earth once more? Well, according to some sources, sometime between now and 2025. But let's be honest, these timelines have a habit of being a tad too optimistic. Just look at the Mammoth Resurrection Project. Nonetheless, it does seem like our Chickenosaurus might be closer to reality than its woolly counterpart. Fingers crossed, my dino-loving friends. Now let's dive into the ethical conundrum that arises from resurrecting dinosaurs. Should we even create these creatures? Sure, the mammoths were proposed as a solution to combat climate change, but some argue that we could fund other projects with better chances of success. Besides, what even is a Chickenosaurus? It's essentially taking a dinosaur-like bird and modifying it to superficially resemble what we imagine a dinosaur should look like. It's like putting a dino costume on a chicken, isn't it? And let's not forget the practicalities. If we release these creatures into the wild, we'd need a viable breeding population of a few hundred individuals. But where would we put them? And at what cost to existing species? Sure, a zoo might be an option, but is it fair to confine these magnificent beasts for our amusement? It's a dilemma, no doubt. However, here's my prediction. 
As soon as we have a viable Chickenosaurus specimen, the corporate world will pounce on it like a T-Rex on a buffet. They'll patent the living daylights out of it, monopolizing the market and making dinosaurs the latest pet craze. Picture it, a funky looking chicken that's surprisingly easy to care for. The demand will be colossal and the price? Well, let's just say it won't be a measly 20 bucks. But here's the thing, should we mass produce dinosaurs just to satisfy our childhood dreams of having a pet dinosaur? It's true that we already mass produce animals for human consumption, but the idea of creating a dinosaur purely for our amusement raises some eyebrows. The kid in me wants a pet dinosaur, no doubt, but when it comes down to it, would I actually buy one? Would you? So there you have it, fellow adventurers. The tantalizing prospect of a real life Jurassic Park is looming on the horizon. We're on the verge of witnessing the rebirth of dinosaurs, albeit in a Chickenosaurus form. It's a scientific endeavor fueled by ambition, curiosity, and a healthy dose of skepticism. But before we part ways, let me leave you with this question. Should we bring dinosaurs back? Is it a triumph of scientific progress or an ethical minefield? As the debate rages on, we find ourselves at the crossroads of curiosity and responsibility. The decision lies in our hands, my friends. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more engaging content about science and the universe. Thanks for watching.